Hey guys, Jinx here, and today I want to show you how I do my trainer reruns. This is a super beginner friendly money making method because it only requires one Pokemon that costs about 150k and can easily net about 250k or more per, of profit per hour. The trainer is reset every 6 hours, making it possible to do 3 or even 4 per day if you're really dedicated to this. I usually keep mine to 1 per day just so I don't burn out on it. But if you keep up with it, you could technically be making about a million per day just doing this method four times. I think it's much easier for beginners than gym reruns to get started on, not just for the intro cost, but it's a little bit more straightforward. Uh, and it can net almost as much per hour. Shout out to Demon Bone on the forums for collecting the data on how much each trainer in every region gives you. It was super useful for developing this run. However, after I put my whole run together, I noticed a forum post of somebody who built an almost identical route to mine. So that is Holy Broccoli, and I'll link both of the posts in the description below. I'm going to be using some of Holy Broccoli's images as they're really straightforward in getting to the trainers. I'll show you how we get to the trainers through the video, and I'll link the images as well. So thank them for that. All you really need for this run is a decent cloister. You'll need a Pokemon with a Rock Climb or the Ocarina of it. You'll need a Pokemon with Defog or the Ocarina. And any Pokemon that can help out in a doubles battle. I'd also highly recommend bringing along a low level like Smeargle or a Breloom or something like that with an EXP share as it'll help you net a lot more money. Let's first take a look at the Cloister you'll be bringing. You're going to want Adamant Nature on this. Uh, at any plus attack, as long as you're not minus speed, even with minus speed, you'd probably be okay on this one. You just want plus attack. Most of the things you're going to be fighting are going to be about level 50, so the margin for error on here is pretty easy to get around. Uh, as for EVs, you'll want to go all attack and all speed. IVs, you definitely don't need or even really want uh, 5x31 five, five on this. You will want 31 attack and 31 speed. You shouldn't be taking any attacks, so the defenses don't matter at all. The only attack you actually need for this is Icicle Spear. You'll want to PP max it, because then you won't have to reset very often to get your PP back. Uh, so yeah, get that maxed, and that's literally the only attack we're going to use out this whole run. You're going to want Skill Link as your ability, just to ensure you're always going to be hitting 5 times with your Icicle Spear. And the item you're going to want is Choice Band. Again, we're only using one item. So you just choice band it and you'll get a lot more power out of it. Other than that, uh, you will need something to help out in a doubles battle. You can leave Cloyster in. However, I usually swap to my Garchomp and Togekiss just because they work really well in double battles. This one will be a little bit quicker, but as long as you have something that can attack the second Pokemon, again, they'll all be level 50, so you don't even need anything too strong. I just like these two because I can Earthquake with Garchomp, Togekiss is immune to it, and then Hyper Voice with Togekiss just makes the fight a little bit quicker. And then I bring along a lower level Smeargle. This is one I've, I bred myself. Uh, you could just buy one off the GTL. I trained it up so that it's a pretty good, pretty desirable Pokemon. I moveset it and everything. You you could just buy uh, like a Breloom at level 1 with good stats, EXP share it, and after a few of these runs it'll be level 100 and you'll be able to make a ton of money off of selling that on the GTL. Since a recent update to gyms with the addition of those portals, I've swapped my Morimoto and Cynthia over to my trainer run instead of the gym rerun, since I can now squeeze in a few extra gyms. Hopefully I'll be putting together a guide once I've fully optimized the route and add in a added in several more gyms. I'm hoping to get about 30 gyms out of my gym rerun now. These two are on an 18 hour timer, so if you try to go through this rerun multiple times per day, just keep in mind you'll have to skip them until the 18 hours has passed. Also you will need a different setup for them, which I've explained in my guide on those two uh, in my previous video last week, so check that out if you haven't seen it, or if you're a beginner and you don't quite have any more money to get set up. You, don't, you can just skip right past them and get into the regular trainers right away. I also have one change I want to make to my Morimoto and Cynthia rerun, so I'll make that correction here. In my guide on Morimoto and Cynthia, I mentioned that the backup Pokemon doesn't really matter. However, I found through some further testing that I had actually miscalculated the nature and abilities on Cynthia's Licky Licky and Morimoto's Snorlax. It still worked, 
and I was successful making it through these with my backup cloister. However, it wasn't a super clean run, and I don't want you guys to struggle through it. So I found a better solution for the run is to just add Conkolder. As a bulky fighting type, he can handle swapping in and is fighting type, so he's super effective with stab against both of the normal type problem Pokemon. I recommend adding him in as your backup Pokemon and swapping him in against the Snorlax and Licky Licky if you come across those teams. I'll show you the one that I made for my own runs here. So if you bring a Conkeldur like this, uh, he's a fighting type, so if you come across that Cynthia's Licky Licky on one of those teams, uh, especially since it's built as a special defense wall, you'll run through it with no problems with Conkeldur. I wanted one to be a little competitive, so I actually built it up pretty good with Adamant Nature, some pretty good IVs, decent bulk. Uh, as long as you have okay IVs and level 100 on this with a plus attack nature, uh, I wouldn't really go with minus defense, you'd probably want to stick to Adamant here. Get Guts and a Flame Orb on it, and even your Drain Punch, uh, run the calcs on it, will one hit KO the Licky Licky once you got that burn on with Guts. So uh, I put Thunder Punch also just because there's a lot of things in their teams that are weak to Thunder or to Electric. So I thought that that would be good coverage again, just in case something weird happens. So I hope that helps clear it up. If you want to put Ice Punch and Fire Punch on it, you'll have even more versatility. But uh, that run has worked so clean for me, except in this one instance. So I just wanted to give you guys that bit of feedback on that video from last week. There's one last thing I wanted to go over, and that's if you should use a coin or a riches charm. This always depends on the current cost of the items and how much you're going to be making from your run. Riches charms only come into the game during the Lunar New Year event, which is going on right now. We've even got some fireworks to celebrate. Uh, so the price is going to fluctuate a lot, probably come down a lot over the next week or two, and then even maybe a bit further after. I mean, the coins are farmed from Meow, so their supply is steady. They're always going to be your cheaper choice. I made a spreadsheet here that you're welcome to use to compare how effective each item is in the different kind of runs you want, but I just want to go over a quick example of how to use it so you can choose what the best method is for your run based on the current market whenever you're watching this video. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to choose which is best for the run that you're doing. You can use this for gym reruns or trainer rebattles or whatever you're doing to earn money and decide if an amulet coin or riches charm is worth it for you at the time based on the price. The only things you're going to adjust on here is this block here where it says 285,000 on a coin. So that you're going to run a test with a coin before you want to spend a lot on a riches charm. So I've tested this run, I make about 285,000 doing this run that I'm about to show you on a coin. So just to compare if a Riches Charm is better, you're going to put the amount that you earn in this box, then say go to the GTL and see how much each item is. So I've checked the current prices on the GTL and these are them. However, at different times of the year, they're gonna be very different since the Riches Charms only come in during the Lunar New Year. So if these are more expensive, just change it. If these go up to 60,000, for example, and these go up to 150,000, that will change the math. And you can see it automatically calculates how much profit you make based on how much you spent on the chart. Don't touch either uh, any of these boxes here as those will all auto calculate. However, once you put the coin test in, the cost of each coin, it'll tell you how much you earn using a Riches Charm versus an Amulet Coin and how much profit you make. That's just how much you earn minus the uh, cost of the Charm or Coin. And you can also see, if you're curious, how much you would have earned without a Coin or Charm and you can even see if it's worth maybe going uh, without a Coin, but it's always worth at least taking a Coin with you. So that's it for this uh, for this spreadsheet here. Anyways, with all that out of the way, let's jump into this run. Alright, so we're going to start our run at Morimoto. Like I said, I used to do this guy with my uh, gym rerun, but I've actually swapped over to doing it here since the recent update. Uh, based on the calculations, I think the richest charm 75% is most effective for its current cost. So I'm going to pop one of these, and then we're going to hop into this fight. So I won't go too in detail of how I do this fight, just because I did cover this uh, in a lot of depth in my most recent uh, previous video but we're just going to start our stealth rocks 
So I'll just speed through this and get to the next trainer right away. With Morimoto down, gonna head to the PC, get a reset in, and then go to Cynthia. So again, we're gonna use the same setup. So I've already gone over this strategy in my past video, like I mentioned with Mori. So I'm just gonna go through it very quickly for you. Right, and with that, Cynthia and Morimoto down. We've already made a really good uh, amount of money. We're gonna, gonna head back. The rest of this run is super easy compared to the start. We're actually gonna head back to Andela Bay, and this is where the trainers start. These are the two highest paying trainers outside of Morimoto and Cynthia. From here, we're literally just gonna mash Icicle Spear through this entire run, nonstop. These two trainers give you about 8,000 each. I think even mm, 8,000 on a coin. So probably about 9,000 on this. 9 to almost 10,000. So the richest turn is 10,000 from each of these trainers. As you can see why, this is the probably the easiest, most beginner-friendly money-making method. You're making really good money, and all you have to do is use this one attack. There's no setup. There's no lead. It's just choice band, cloister, icicle, spear easy peasy the whole way through so next we're gonna head straight to opulicid city the mall here has two trainers that pay a pretty good amount i think they're about six thousand each so be careful which ones you choose there's only two here that we're gonna go to that's the one right beside the tm shop and the one just up here in the top right corner so it was almost eight thousand from that one trainer and we'll get the exact same amount from this one. So just about 8,000 from each of these two trainers. All right, so after that, we're gonna head right back to the city, Opelucid, Opelucid City, I think it's how you say that. And we're gonna head straight north up towards the path that heads to Victory Road. We're gonna skip past this first trainer and we're gonna hit all the other trainers on this path. These guys are all uh, typically on a coin. You get just under 5,000 from them each. Uh, however, with the Riches Charm, you'll get a little bit more, probably close to 6,000 each. This is where Icicle Spear becomes really important and specifically Cloister is the best for this because it's a multi-hit attack. You'll notice a couple people on this path have a Focus Sash. And a Focus Sash, if you're using a single attack, will cause some problems and stall out your run. You'll notice there's lots of things that he's not effective against. Ice is not effective against. However, again, all these are pretty much level 50 to 55 at most. So even though you're not uh, effective, at a level 100, hitting a skill link choice bandit icicle spear you're gonna crush any of these things you could probably start this run at around like level 75 or so and then even use it to level your cloister i haven't done those calculations you could do them yourself or try it out and if it works for you let me know what level you made it work for in the comments below i'm really curious what level you could start this at you could even use it to level up a cloister and sell on the gtl and make some money that way if we found out the minimum level required to do this. Once you're done with Unova, we're gonna heal up to get our PP back and head to Sinnoh. We're gonna go to Veilstone City. We're gonna head south. There's a really high paying tra trainer here, P.I. Carlo. This guy pays a lot. It's another one that's about 10,000. It's just under the amount, uh, or maybe it's the same amount that you get from the trainers in Undella, or around Undella. Now we're gonna go back to Veilstone and we're gonna head west this time. We go west out of the city, there's two ace traders here. These two pay about 5-ish K each. Just under 5K if you're on a coin. And they're, again, just Icicle Spear right through them. Nice and easy.
All right, next place we're gonna go to is Art Home City. From here, we're gonna go uh, uh, just go south. You gotta loop around a little bit. You go south, and there's a bunch of rich trainers here out by the mansion. Make sure you skip past the officers, and we're gonna fight each of the rich trainers. There's two old uh, socialites, I think they're called, and then there's a rich boy and rich girl. Each one gives you about 6k on a coin. With them down, you're gonna come up through here, and there's the two here. There's the boy and the girl. Make sure you do the girl first. If you go for the boy first, you should be fine, but he does have a pretty tanky Pokemon. I think it's an uh, Azumarill. I can't remember exactly, but he has something that can toxic your cloister. He often survives and will poison you. you. You'll survive it, but the time it takes to go through the damage ticks just waste time on your charm if you take those toxic hits. Okay, next we're gonna go to uh, Sunny Shore. From Sunny Shore, there's only one trainer out this way and he's pretty far. However, he's a pretty high paying trainer. It's about 6,000, between six and 7,000 if you're on a coin. Next one, we're actually gonna go do a doubles battle next. So you're gonna head to uh, Salation Town and we're gonna go north. There's a doubles battle here. Like I said, you can definitely use Cloyster and just any other high level Pokemon and do this battle. If you don't have a second high level Pokemon, you could probably just skip the double battles also and still be extremely profitable in this. I'm gonna reset here, get my Cloyster back up to max PP. And ooh, I forgot, I do need to grab my Pelipper is my defogger. So we're gonna head straight up to Celestic Town. We're gonna come down here. Now this is the first guy we're gonna fight. You have to make sure you use a defog. Whether you have the Ocarina or whatever defogger you have, make sure you use that. Otherwise you're gonna miss your attacks. Now, oops, I forgot to switch my Cloister in. Uh, Togekiss should be fine for this. Just gonna remember to put my Cloister up front. Uh, don't go with this one. He looks like an Ace Trainer, but he's actually a Bird Trainer. I used to get tripped up with him all the time in this run. So he only pays like 2k. We're gonna go to this one who's an Ace Trainer and pays uh, just about 5k. Right. Our next one is a doubles battle. So again, I'm gonna throw my Togekiss and Garchomp in. You can definitely leave Cloyster and any other thing. Uh, whatever's quickest for you in a double battle. Now let's just hope I don't forget to swap my Cloyster back up to the front after this. Cloyster back up and there's one more on this path we're gonna fight. It's this guy here. And with that, we are we're done, we're gonna head uh, over to Snow Point City. In Snow Point City, the gym here has six trainers in it. Each one pays about 6k each. So, oh right, yeah, there's a teleporter here, but we're just gonna go on the right side, and we're gonna fight this trainer first. Then you go right here, we're gonna fight this top one first. And right here, we're gonna fight this top one next. Now that he's done, we're gonna head to the left, down the stairs. We're gonna go all the way to the snowball, slide down, to the right, and then we can bump into this trainer here. So this one, you're gonna head down to the left, keep going left, then up the snow patch, and then once you get to the north, you can bump into this trainer here. So I'm actually going to swap uh, my Togekiss up just because I usually heal right before the snow point gym. You probably should heal right before the snow point gym because it does take a lot of PP to make it through. Uh, I am just ran out of PP on my Cloyster, so I just swapped it out, but you should probably just heal before you come in here. You're going to come down and you can leave from here. We're going to go reset, get our PP back.
we're gonna go we're gonna head up to the survival area and first place we're gonna go is just over here to the right so right before you hit this patch of grass you're gonna want to pop a super repel you might seem weird to pop a super repel for such a small area uh, but we're gonna be using the repel to continue on to a couple of more trainers after this right, with that that's about another 6k from this guy almost 7k we're gonna fly back to the survival area from here now we're gonna head west there's a trainer here kind of hidden in the bushes we are gonna take them out first Head through this grass, go down, and we're gonna fight this trainer next. Let's continue on this path down into this trainer here. We got one more on this path, we're gonna fight this trainer here. After this one, you're gonna to want to reset again. Make sure you heal up to get your PP back. And we're gonna head over to the resort area this time. We're gonna fight these two trainers next. With those two down, we're gonna head up here. We're gonna fight these trainers here. I'll often switch off my Garchomp at this point because the chip damage from the Sandstorm does actually take a little while. It adds seconds and can interrupt your last trainer battle. It's really not a big deal though. So for this example, I'm gonna run Cloister through it. So as you come up here, there's one you're gonna skip. There's one on the right and one on the left. Make sure you only fight the one on the right here. The reason is the one on the left has an Aggron that will use a sturdy Endeavor strat, so he'll stay alive on one health. Uh, Cloyster can't really one hit him consistently, so he'll stay alive on really low or one health. And then Endeavor you, which will bring you down to one health, and then the Sandstorm will chip you for one, for your last hit point. So you'll just want to skip that one altogether. Uh, unless you have some extra backup Pokemon, then you, you can do it if you want. But I'd recommend skipping it. If you have the health from uh, surviving the Sandstorm chip, you'll always want to skip this guy, but you can fight him. Because I'm a little low from the Sandstorm chip, I'm going to skip him for now. Usually when I'm using my Garchomp to tank the, or to skip over the Sandstorm chip, uh, I do go fight him. Ooh, unlucky. These two, we're gonna fight these two, and these should be our last trainers that we'll have time for. So we are just gonna miss the charm bonus on this one, however we'll still get pretty good payout from it anyway. And that'll leave us with a total of 3,284,011. So we started with 2,948,417 Pokéen and finished with 3,284,011 Pokéen. So using a 75% richest charm, I was able to make 335,594 Pokéen from this run. If we compare that to the base amount we would have made without any charm or coin, that means it would be 191,768 without any bonus, without any coin or anything. But if we were to use a coin, we would have made 287,652 from this run. So even just with a basic amulet coin, a very, very good payout. So I paid 54,000 for my richest charm which means I had a total profit of 281,594 Pokien using the 75% richest charm. So with amulet coins currently at 17,500, if I were to have used an amulet coin, I would have earned a total of 270,152. So compare that to the total profit I would have, or I did make with the richest charm, 
and I netted myself an extra 11,500 just by choosing the correct charm. Again, the spreadsheet is just below. I highly recommend doing a test run and seeing how much you make at a base and then putting the price at the time that you're watching this video in and choose which one's the best for you. Even though it's a small difference, uh, those little bits can add up. In addition to all that, my smear goal, which started at level 46, is now level 74. And with a couple more of these runs, it will be level 100. And let's check out the difference in price of a smear goal at level one. So you can see the cheapest one is uh, 1.2K. Now, granted, this one isn't very good. If we just pump in the cheapest level 100 smear goal, you'll see they're about 100K. What I typically do is I'll breed up a pretty good one with 20, uh, 31 speed, 31 attack, and about 20 in each defensive stat. You'll see these things can sell for between six, seven hundred K at level 100 or compared to level one, if there's any on the market. Yeah, so this would be a really good one to buy right now. This 188K and at level 100, you can sell this for at least uh, 500K or so. I might actually just buy that one and use it for one of my trainer reruns. And since your EXP charm is going to net you about 250,000 experience on whatever thing you're leveling up, this will take about four runs in order to get to level 100. So it's going to net you almost 100,000 extra on top of the Pokéen you earn from the trainers themselves. This puts your total at almost 400,000 Pokéen, which makes this comparable or sometimes even better if you get a good sale on whatever you're leveling up than a gym rerun. I hope this video helps you make some of your own Pokéen. Especially for beginners who are struggling to put together a gym rerun team, this is an even easier starting point and that's a really high amount of money for considering how easy it is. If this helped you out, please drop a like on it and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll be trying to put out a video once per week and as a smaller channel, just kind of getting started, I appreciate every subscription that you guys give. If you drop any comments down below, let me know how it goes. I always appreciate reading those and I'll make sure to try to reply to every single one that I see. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.